Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing today? I hope you are well, and uh, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, if you have stumbled on this video, you're probably saying to yourself, who is this bellend, and what is he talking about? Well, if you don't skip the video within the first, let's say, 30 seconds, which we're probably coming up to now, statistically around 99% of you will skip the video. You probably already have. I'm probably talking to no one. But let's just say, let's just humor it and say that you didn't skip it. So what I'm going to do is, uh, if you're still here, I'm going to tell you about Synth VR, which you may or may not have heard of. So um, this is a little preface. Uh, I'm not personally affiliated with this bit of software. Um, a guy called Daniel at 42 Tones is developing it. Um, I just really like using it, and I think it's a really, 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 really good example of the kind of future potential of VR um, and, you know, what it could offer to, to music production, uh, and, well, the music production and the performance world, really. Um, it, it's already stuff like uh, Tilt Brush and uh, what's me Medium VR? I masterpiece vr there's there's various kind of stuff for visual artists and you know making 3d models in vr and stuff like that but in terms of sound there's not a lot out there there's definitely some other stuff there is there's there's a good one called transient which is pretty decent and i know paradiddle have been doing some good stuff with the drumming um and there's definitely a few that i've forgotten to mention but people are doing cool stuff but this one just seems to have grabbed my attention personally um and i just love using it it's really fun. So I'll just say apologies for the microphone quality. Um, I'm just using OBS to record the image from my Rift CV1. Um, and I'm using the built-in microphone on the headset because to be honest, I've already got a cable coming to my head from my headphones and from the PC for the Rift. So um, and the last thing I want to do is worry about setting up a microphone that can actually hear me when I'm turning around and things like that. So with that out of the way, um, so much rabbiting. Why are you rabbiting? Let me just check. I am recording, yes, because I don't want to do this twice, if I'm honest. Um, and now my headset's got all steamed up. Right, just shut up. Just, just get on with it. All right. So you just have to bear with me because I need to put my headphones on. This, this is one of the downsides of VR at the moment is that although the Rift has got some little earphones that aren't bad, they're not the best. And when you're trying to do sound design stuff like this, they're rubbish, to be honest. They're, they're passable, but you just can't hear what's going on. So anyway, I'll just, um, just in case you haven't seen Synth VR before or heard it, I'm just going to show you what I've been doing this afternoon. And all right, it's not, I'm not going to win any awards with this, okay? But basically, I'm setting up a new template and I'm trying to make it tidy because it's really fun, this, because all of these little cable things, that's how you get your signal around. Um, so if I turn this up, this is a basic kick drum that I've made, right? And this sequencer here, and that's what's powering it. Although some of you uh, who might be in the know might be saying, but what? That's a basic four to the floor kick drum. Why am I not hearing that? That's because I've done this. Uh, now it's a four to the floor kick drum. So this is just something I came up with today, which I think could be quite cool, uh, which I'll talk about a bit more in a moment. So anyway, sorry, I'll just put that kick drum back. Here's a really bad snare drum, <laughs> which is coming from, um, from here. So if I put in a few more, you see, that is the world's worst snare drum. This is kind of like some hi-hats, except it doesn't sound anything like hi-hats, but just, just kind of, it sounds pretty cool. I think it sounds all right. And then I've done this, which is, I guess that's just some more kind of percussive, 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 uh, no swearing. Uh, percussive stuff and then just at the last minute I started adding in some bass now I mean mate I'll just turn it a bit louder Coming at you from Synth VR. 
coming at you from Cynthia. Here we are, here we are, it's Cynthia. That is enough of that. Stop. Stop. Yeah, I, it, this was. This is not going to be a performance video. Um, I honestly just wanted to give people um, an idea of what's going on in here. I mean, like, there's so much you can do in this place. Um, this place? Are we in a place? We're in. We're in a space. Um, there's just so much to do. If you're, if you like making noise, if you like music, if you like synthesizers. If, if you just like messing around with stuff, this, this is so much fun. And, you, you know, there's, there's people, other people are going to make stuff like this. And I'm not saying that this is the greatest thing in the world. But right now, this, this is free to try. If you've got a Rift, uh, a Quest, you can use it standalone on the Quest, which I haven't tried. But I, I'd love to be able to try that because at the moment, I have a cable. I have two cables attached to my face, which is okay but it can be a little bit annoying at times uh, especially if you just want to kind of jump in and get in the flow of it the um the quest 2 is coming out soon as well uh which is going to be really cool um so i'll admit i'm going to go a little bit off piece now because none of this is scripted and i'm just going to wrap it so feel free to tune out feel free to um hang around if you like so i'll just explain a bit about what i've done in here but if you've never seen synth vr before I thought it might be a good idea just to quickly show you. Basically, um, it's before this, I'd never done modular synthesis really. I, I, I'd rarely, rarely, and hardly used uh, hardware synths at all. Mainly because uh, when I got into synths, I was about 15, I guess, for, uh, yeah, it must have been probably 15, 16. Um, maybe 13, and, and a mate of mine gave me a dodgy copy of Reason. All right, it was a long time ago, and you can't arrest me for it now, I don't think. I, all my software now is legit. I use Ableton Live normally. Um, but, see, I've lost my train of thought completely. Uh, what I was going to say is, when I first got into Synthesis, I wasn't using hardware. Uh, I was aware of hardware, but I, I didn't realize, you know, how, how people made noises just from scratch and, and it all starts with with a simple oscillator like this when it comes to synthesis you know i'm not I'm not a scientist so someone might actually say oh, actually it doesn't begin with an oscillator but it kind of does so i've set this up this is four separate mixer modules that i've assigned next to each other and i've actually i'll just take you in the back i've i've submixed them into two more mixers you can see where i'm going can't you which which l and r l and r out uh, this is actually the where the sound goes finally this is the out the, the master out the reason i put them back here is because i don't need to look at these to be honest they just get in the way and part of my recent mission with simph vr is to try and make something that isn't just an absolute mess because on my last video which you can see on my youtube channel if you want i just did like a little performance and uh, it, it's an absolute mess, to be honest. The, there's cables going everywhere. And um, what I'm trying to do with this is I'm, I want this front bit mainly to be my kind of control center. So this is a bass, right? This is the oscillator that I've just added. So I know some of you are going to be like, I know what an oscillator is, you knob. But I just thought I would point it out for people that don't. So at the moment, it's on its default frequency, which I don't know what that is, but it's somewhere in the, I don't know, 1K or something. Um, you take it down, take it down, take it down. And I, I can't hear that anymore, either because my headphones aren't good enough. Coming up, I can just about hear that. Obviously, this is going to get lost in YouTube. You know, it's pretty obvious stuff. Lower, higher, lower, higher, lower, higher. So that's it. You. You, you can make a multitude of noises with this because what you could do, what you could do with this, I'm just going to turn it down because it is quite annoying, um, is you could add like a sequencer to it um, or you could add an envelope to it. Uh, the sequencer and an envelope could work quite well because you could take a, um, you know, you could take, sorry, just bear with me one second. This here is my, maybe this is a better place to start with. <laughs> I told you I'd go off piste. So let me just grab this speaker. This module 
works a little bit like the uh, master out module, this thing, which bear with us. Uh, I don't think it's letting me make one because I've already got one, but yeah, that guy that's over there, that one, this is just another sound kind of output, place to send your sound, a sound destination, let's call it. So pew, we're gonna take, this, this is kind of like your tempo, your click, as it were, your metronome. It's not really, but it, it, it kind of is acting as that. If you put that into that, it's sending a little click. If you slow that down, it's going slower. Slow, 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 slow. Quite nice visual representation from the light. If you go really high, it turns into some kind of side trance. Yeah, so that's that's what that is doing. Um, this is coming out of here, and the reason I've done these splits is because I need to send this to various places, and those various places are these sequences, which are driving all these oscillators and envelopes and filters and stuff. Um, so what I've done to try and tidy things up is, because what I was finding was I would just end up with cables coming out here, over here, over here, all over the place, and it's quite easy then to get a bit lost. You're like, oh, where is it? Which one do I need to turn? So. Now I know that this is my master clock, and that's the overall speed. So that that is coming into this bass, <laughs> kick drum, and awful snare drum. Yeah, it's coming into those. And if I change this, that's just going to change the tempo. So what's happening is this is coming out of here. It's then going along here, follow the orange wire, and it's coming down to the clock on here, which is driving this sequence here, then I've also split it off again here to go whoop, and I've done it there. And the, the only reason for these splits, you don't need these splits. It's just to kind of create, think of them as like overhead cables, I suppose. That's that's my thinking. And it, this isn't done. This is very much a prototype on what I'm working on. Um, I'm just trying to think of ways of, of tidying everything up and making it all a bit more manageable. The other good thing about this is, this could be anywhere. I could move this down here if I wanted, but do you know what I mean? If I have that there, you end up getting cables in front of your controls and stuff. So keeping them up here, I feel like it's quite a nice way of doing it. So anyway, there's also this blue cable coming out of this split, which you might be like, what's that for, Charlie? Well, I'll tell you. So at the moment, that is doing nothing. But look, blue cable goes up into here. Um, comes across into there and look it goes down into the reset on every single one of my sequences and the reason it does this is because if say you start messing around with the timing and let's put let's put this sound in as well right so I've put I've put that in and I'm gonna be like I'm gonna mess around with all these clocks the clock is just that it multiplies the click that's coming in from this. It multiplies and it messes with it, yeah? It, it, <laughs> there's, a, there's a better scientific explanation about it, but... Now I'm all out of sync, right? But you think, well, surely you could just you could just turn it all back to where you were, couldn't you, right? You could just take it all back to where you were. And you'd be like, it'll be fine, what are you on about? Don't worry about it, mate. You'd be like, yeah, well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But... Let's hope this works, right? I don't know if you can see this now, but these all these bars should be moving in sync, but they're not. I want to mess this one up a bit more. All right now, it's really obvious. Look, these this these should both light up at the same time, but they're not. But if I take my reset clock, and all this is is another clock, right? It's just another clock. If I then do this. It's gonna just constantly send a click out of here. So it's going out of this, into this. I've put it hard, hard left panned because I only want to use this left pan here. I use the right for something else. It's coming out of that. And then what it's doing is once I get rid of that, this is in sync again. So it's, it's kind of just a workaround at the moment. Um, it's, I'm hoping that Dan will add in some kind of, you know, better way of doing that. But I just kind of wanted to show you that because that's just one of the little workarounds that I've worked out of how to kind of like sync stuff together and get it, get it going. Um, 
and as like silly and over the top as it seems that you have to do that that's kind of part of the reason that i really 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 love this this software because it you just have to come up with your own ways of doing stuff um so that's just one little one this is one little trick you know what i mean um and that in itself you can make some quite fun noises so i mean i know this isn't very exciting this beat but i've spent like most of the day today just just kind of coming up with this this setup really and what's cool is you can save it you, you can obviously save anything you do you can save it in a slot these five slots here will be saved into your uh, user folder or whatever. Um, he's working on creating actual presets and stuff like that. You'll be able to easily share presets with people, save sessions, uh, and share them with your mates or whatever. Um, at the moment, this saves us five files. And what you can do is you can go and find that folder, copy those files, delete them from the main folder, and then you'll have five more slots. So that's what I like to do. I, if I've got something I really like, I will just do that. So um let me think what what have i not talked about um it, it, to be honest the the best thing you can do is just come in here and just mess around with it yourself because it's just fun i mean if you like just messing around and what i think what makes it more engaging and i i i'm one of these people that's been using ableton live for about 15 years or something and before that i used reason and i've, I've finished the odd track here or there i've, I've certainly never <laughs> really published anything um of note or worth mentioning but it's because most of the process that i enjoy about making music is it's just the it's just messing about you know like i because I, I play guitar a bit as well not so much these days um mainly because my hands don't like it so much because they suck but um the thing i always loved about guitar was just turning on a guitar amplifier and just and just making noise with it um it, that was more that was more enjoyable and therapeutic to me than than actually trying to nail say slash's solo out of a whatever bloody um song Every, everyone's different obviously and people that can play really well i implore them highly you know i don't read music but i i explore sound and 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 i find it just really fun so um I've completely lost track of where I was going with this, but you know, maybe that's okay. But what I would suggest you do is you just come in and give it a go. Um, and there's a really good Discord server where people are really active. Daniel, who's developing it, he's there. He's talking about it all the time. You can suggest stuff to him. Um, there's you know, a load of people talking about what we're doing in here and, and why we're doing it. And well, no one really knows why we're doing it. Why are we doing it? This, I think, I think it's because the, uh, the world is, is burning down around us. And this is this, this small bit of sanity, um, that, um, that we have available to us. So anyway, I thought I'd just make this quick video. I'm running out of things to say. So what I will do is I'll, I'll make another video like this one day, but I'll actually kind of like structure it and maybe show some stuff that I've been working on and um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to uh, what he comes up with next. And uh, recently, recently before I go is what he, what he did was add the filters and the filters is what I really love because for a while you didn't have filters. So you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, obviously most people in sound that do sound and music know what a filter is, but without a filter, this would just sound like this. Which you might say, that sounds fine, mate. What are you on a bear? You see there? So, that, so that the two recent modules that he added is this, which is like a wavetable oscillator, essentially. It's a, dual, it's a dual oscillator, so you've got two separate oscillators. So, so this is an oscillator, a really simple one. But all that was was a sine wave that you could set the frequency of, and you could also do a um, CV on it. So you could, you could adjust the uh, the way i'm not i'm not really a synth i'm not a synth scientist or anything so i i actually don't know exactly how that works but i, I know in my head how it works i just don't know how to explain it but um look it up on google anyway that he added this wavetable um oscillator which has a bunch of different waves in it so it has actually got if you take if I just go from A, 
That's just the sine wave, yeah? That's the pitch of the sine wave. The detune doesn't do anything unless you've got it in A and B. Which, so you could set this to... Uh, there we go. I don't know how well you can hear that. It's always best to listen to this kind of stuff in headphones because you, you might not be able to hear it on a phone or something. So that just adds a mild detune to it, yeah? You can also offset this one to get that kind of chordal, chordal, um, I guess that's the seventh. That's an octave anyway. So the offset goes all the way up to the octave, but it, it, you always sound, uh, wow. Yeah. Square wave's really loud, isn't it? It's really, really loud. You can turn it down. So then you can make yourself like a kind of classic Commodore 64 kind of noise. But yeah, it's, it's a bit harsh on its own like that. So what what what's just been added is the filter, um, which is brilliant because it's got a low pass, a high pass, and a band pass on it. Um, and what this, can, what you can do with this, and again, there'll be a lot of you going, I know what a filter does, mate. Uh, this is for people that don't know what it does. It acts, it kind of scoops out your sound. So, so if you've got the wave coming in like this, um, it's coming out now. So, th so this, this oscillator is making the noise by itself. It doesn't need any input. You can add some input if you want. You could add uh, a sequencer in, and then you can, I haven't shown this module yet, um, but you can add in, I always forget where that one is. There it is. You can add in this, which will, which will kind of quantize in a way. Shall I demonstrate for you? Let's just turn that down because it's quite upsetting, isn't it? When it's just on its own. Um, this to, 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 to you. And then what we'll do is we'll do a sequencer. And to be honest, it doesn't even need to be to the master clock. Ah, should we do it to the master clock? Yeah, go on in. Let's go, go on in, mate. You know what I mean? You can also change the uh, color of the cables, which is quite a nice idea um, if you want to be able to quickly remember what is what, because it gets pretty confusing otherwise. So I'm going to say that yellow is my clock and clock mind, and blue is the reset. Not that I'm probably going to use that. But... What I might do, and I, is that in sync with that now? Yeah, it is. So it's, it seems to, as soon as you make it, he must have programmed it so that they're in sync. Because when it first started, I don't think they did. And that's why I started doing this reset thing. So you could quickly just rejig it all like that. Anyways, you're babbling, mate. This is a little trick for those of you that don't know. Um, and I learned this from Daniel because... He made it, so he he shows you all this stuff. If you go and look at his videos, um, if 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 I now take that, well, I, I'm already taking that. So we're coming out value, value. This, this is the kind of trigger. So this this tells you when it will pulse. So every time it the, the light goes on here, it will send a message, kind of kind of a message. It's not really a message, but I suppose it is. Uh, value down into the in here. What you want to do is turn your level all the way up, right? And then from here to here should now be a minor scale. Now, let's see if it works. What you can also do is you can add like uh, so, so if, if you wanted to get more excited with this you could totally take um, 
the signal that's coming out of this. Well, to be honest, if you're going to do this, you could use the trigger. So the trigger will the trigger will do the same as the value, just it will always be one continuous amount. So what that's really good for is things like envelopes. Um, and what you might use an envelope for is you might take, so imagine this, right? You don't have to imagine anything I'm going to show you. So you're coming out of this sequencer, which is making this really, really, really repetitive bloody sound. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to, uh, you're going to make a amp. And what the amp module is used for is for, it's kind of, amp, it's amplitude or volume, if you would rather call it. I think they are effectively a different thing, but whatever. Um, you're going to put this up all the way here and you're going to turn the level down. And the reason you're going to do that is so rather now than coming out of the filter into my soundboard that I've made, because that's where this, that's how I'm getting the sound in. Yeah. With this, that's the final port of call at the final port of call at the moment. Yeah. Take it out of that, stick that into, <laughs> let me get it right into that. Right. And then you're going to come out of that now into there. So at the moment, if this, right, there we go. This kind of demonstrates it better. I do think that the envelope should start with all its dials down, but it's a very small, it's a small complaint. So you can still hear it, can't you? Just about. See how it's, you can kind of shape the sound like this. Why can't I hear my kick drum anymore? <laughs> No, it's just really quiet. What have you done to it? What have you done to it? You've broken it. Ah, oh, I know what I've done. The joys. Yeah, so. Yeah, so that's my drum beat, right? And then I could, and then I could be like, right, mate. It's a number one hit. It's a number one hit on my hands. It's like watching, it's like watching um, Jimi Hendrix at work. I'm sorry, Jimmy. It's nothing like watching Jimi Hendrix at work. But you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's a lot of scope. And because I linked this to the, you know what? Rather than turning these down, I'm just going to filter them like that. Have a go with it. I apologise that this video has been a little bit sporadic, um, but I just wanted to kind of demonstrate what you can do with it. And there's a lot you can do with it. And the only limit is your imagination. I actually quite like this beat. It's all right. What up, what up, what up? What up, what up, what up? But yeah, I'm going to extend this a lot. I'm going to, for the people that do know SymphVR, um, what I want to do is um, create this kind of template that I can just jump into and maybe I'll even share it at some point. But I honestly think that the best way to learn this sort of stuff, um, especially at the moment as everything's a little bit experimental, is to just jump in and do it yourself because you know, watch other people's videos and take their ideas. But I think it's best to know what every little bit is doing because, and, and there's no, there's, you can't break anything and there's no limit to what you can add. I mean, the, the stuff I didn't touch on here 
is, for example, this, which is um, this this kind of essentially this ball can be used to send signals on the X, Y, and Z axis. X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z. I, I, no, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, this. You know what? This module is a module I do not use enough. So we quickly try it. Let's quickly try it. So I could put it on Yeah, nice. It does as you try and put it into the pitch. What is the pitch of the uh, bass drum? Dum, dum, dum. It's kind of that, isn't it? Kind of. Why not? See, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he comes up with, he being Daniel, comes up with in terms of control units like this, because the fact that I've got these, these are my controllers, obviously, my hands, right? So there's so much you could do. I, I'm, I'm envisioning like a, like a theremin, I mean, in a way, you could already kind of do a theremin. You you could do you could do. Um, it's not going to sound amazing. I wouldn't have thought. What could you do? You you could tell you what. Take away the sequencer. I don't know how that's going to sound. This is what it's all about, though, isn't it? Experimenting. That's still sending a sequencer because of the envelope. Oh yeah. day there because I don't even know how long I've been recording for if you've made it this far then you know what I give, give you a round of applause for making it this far uh, I, I don't mind if you watch these videos or not really I, I just quite enjoy making them and I, I'm I haven't really done much content production in my time and seeing as I have a lot of time on my hands at the moment and this is something I really enjoy I just thought I'd start doing it by the way these filters here because these filters are mono only at the moment, you can't do two. That's definitely going to be on my wish list is, is stereo filters, or at least some way to uh, add a control that could control both of these at the same time. So what I mean by that, if you don't know, which again, I'm sorry if I'm being patronizing, um, if you've got headphones on at the moment, hopefully you can hear that that's only coming out of the right ear. And now it's coming out of the left ear. Yeah, left ear, right ear, both ears. So at the moment, I decided to put these filters on, on my master chain. So the, the, these are kind of the last 
thing that happens. Because as I explained earlier on, this, these, are, these are single inputs, so I can just add any old oscillator I want to here, chuck it up, and it'll come through, like, like, this, um, like this bass line or whatever. This idea here is that I can do the drums separately. So this is only the, doing these first four, which is kind of, my idea is to be like, this is my drum beat, and this will be like bass, Maybe I'll add in, you know, whatever, and then they maybe like have pads, uh, and then some kind of leads on here, and then I can give myself flexible controls, you know, within within reach. So I'm not going like, oh, where's the filter for that one? It's up here somewhere. Because you can definitely do that, but you start to get a little bit dazed and confused. So, right, that's it. I, I am honestly going to leave it now. So thanks for coming. It was a real pleasure, and I hope to see you making stupid stuff in Synth VR very soon. Bye then!